All right. Um, I was going to make a quick recording here. About it, It'll probably be about 15, 16 minutes long. Instead of breaking it up into small pieces, I've learned um, to just make it like, you know, 15 to 18 minutes, and it'll still, I could still transfer it over to YouTube. I thought YouTube had like an eight minute thing, but I think it's a 20, so we're good. Anyway, just in case, just in case, now these 10 problems uh, uh, will probably be responsible for on the exam. You're probably going, well, wait a minute. Have we even covered chapter 19? We've got the big ideas of it down so well that, that we're good. All right. So let's take a look at problem number one. We did this in class today. It says, in an evacuated tube, electrons produce x-rays by accelerating from rest through a voltage of 0.37 kilovolts. All right, kilovolts. So that's about 370 volts. All right, that's 370 volts. And striking the copper plate. Okay, so there you got the change in potent potential. All right. The electrons, um, they went through, uh, now electrons want to go from a lower potential to a higher. So when you do that um, subtraction, uh, you, you're, um, uh, is they're going from that lower potential to, um, they want to go from a lower potential to a higher, but um, we kind of, no, we send them from, no, they go from a higher potential to a lower. So you wind up with that negative uh, potential difference. And uh, wh what am I saying? Let me show you. All right, so here's the electron. Here's basically what we do is we got this parallel plate right here, and we got a bunch of negative charge over here. And here's here's kind of how that cathode thing works. So cathode ray tubes on the negative side. So you got this electron sitting here, and it fires because here's a bunch of positive sides. So eventually it goes, oh, yeah, I want to go flying this way. So it goes, um, so the potential difference here, um, say this would be zero, and just for, because you can make it anything you want, and this would be negative 370. So here's my final voltage, here's my initial voltage. So V final, or, or final voltage minus um, uh, initial voltage, Wait, that gives me that positive. I thought I had this all figured out. Anyway, it wants to go flying this way, all right? So it's changed. Oh, so it's going to um, it's going to a higher potential from a lower potential. In other words, it's changing. And so you've got this electron, negative Q. Uh, times a negative answer, negative V. And so it's positive. So it's got a positive kinetic energy. In other words, as the electron moves from here to here, it's losing electric potential but gaining kinetic, right? All right, so we've got that. So we've, we've already done this. So it's negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 times negative 370 is equal to 1 half mv squared, all right? We did that in class. So you're on your way. You're on your way. Oh, this is negative. So make sure that your kinetic energy is positive, and then you set that up that way. All right? What's number two look like? I'm not going to do all 10, of course. 395 joules in 12. What is the average power? Oh, do you remember power? Do you remember good old power? What is power? That's pretty easy. Joules per second, right? Good. So that's, that's the supposed electric field between the, oh, how far apart in meters are the two if the potential difference is 0.155 kilovolts? This is great. I'm glad we're on this problem because I kind of wanted to get there today. I about, I about mentioned this today and I didn't. So here's what they're talking about. Inside, inside two conducting plates, we're going to assume, here's what they mean. Inside these conducting plates, so we've got it. We've got an electric field taking place here: positive, 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 negative, 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 negative. Okay, going like this. Here's your electric field. All right, Here's your electric field acting this way, and we're going to say it's uniform. It's a uniform electric. Oh. 
is a uniform electric field, okay? Now, the potential difference, the change in voltage is equal to, I don't know why I didn't put the equal sign up here, the electric field times D, times the change in distance. Now this is, the distance is the cosine of the angle of the electric field, the cosine of zero. In other words, the straight line distance. All of a sudden I started to go down a very scary slope there. I'm not going to do that. I started to go down almost a physics 460 slope on why this works. But anyway, so the E field is moving parallel to the displacement. Therefore, it is a scalar. Voltage is a scalar. All right? But that's all there is to this. I just I wanted to keep these problems and, and the exam will be just straightforward calculations like this. All right? In fact, trust me on this. How far apart in meters are the two, if the potential difference is, again, this would be 155 volts. So we've got the E field, which is 46 times 10 to the 3 volts per meter, and we got this. So let me do that one real fast. So we got the E field is equal to, Jesus, I'm sorry, <laughs> i got to be careful. Uh, 46 times 10 to the third and 0 0.155, 0 0.155, okay. The E field is equal to 46.0 times 10 to the third. Um, uh, now, look at this. Now the E field is volts per meter. What are you doing to me? We first learned it as, as uh, newtons per coulomb. Same thing. Volts per meter equals newtons per coulomb. Whoa, are you kidding me? Well, look, you've got a scalar divided by a vector here, and this one you've got a vector divided by a scalar. It works out. All right, so anyway, but this actually comes out to be a scalar. And so then we've got the change in voltage is equal to 155. So just doing the math, 155 is equal to 46 times 10 to the third times D. Because there it is. So if I divide that out, i to find my calculator. I wasn't ready. I never am. I just kind of, I read 50 emails and just jumped into this. All right, so here we go. So we got 155 divided by parentheses, 46 second e to the third. Boom. 3.37. I'm going to go 3.37 times 10 to the negative third meters. Which makes sense to me. About 3.3 millimeters. These plates are not very far apart. It's about 3.3 millimeters. Let's go, let's check that out. Three. If this is wrong, I'm quitting and I'm not even going to do this anymore. I'm, I'm going to quit for the day. 10 to the negative 3. There we go. Submit. Yeah. Let's look at problem 4. See? What's problem 4? Say? Suppose two parallel conduct are separated. Oh. Okay. Find the maximum potential between the two in kilovolts. Given the maximum sustainable electric field strength is 3 times 10 to the 6. So in other words, you're just working. this time you're going to find the voltage. All right, problem 4, you're going to find the voltage based on the voltage is equal to the electric field times the distance. So in problem 4, this is problem 3, this is problem 1. Okay, so in problem 4, ah, I'm all excited. I get to go babysit my granddaughter for the. But she's gonna come spend the night with Grandpa and Grandma. All right, she's all one. <laughs> ah. Anyway, so on problem four. This time they gave you these two things, and they want to find what the voltage is. Trying to keep it fastballs down the middle, guys. 
Electrons and a uniform electric field. Having that, okay, notice, again, volts per meter. It is then released and accelerated by the presence of electrons. What is the change in electrons' kinetic energy? In, in kilo electron volts. Ah, and it travels over the distance. Okay, here we go. Small snag, and I'm going to stop here. All right, so this works really kind of slick. All right, this really, this works really kind of slick. What is the change in the electron's kinetic energy in kilo electron volts? All right, so here's, and, and this makes this answer so nice. That's why I picked this, all right? And then we can, we can actually kind of start on problem six in, in that area on, on Wednesday, all right? So, problem five. They accelerated something. Uh, the um, electric field was equal to, let me get what the electric field was real quick, and we'll finish this up. The electric field is 2.25, 2.25 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter. Okay? All right, now we're going to shoot an electron through there. Okay? We're going we're gonna to shoot an electron through there. And I want to know what its energy is. Okay. Okay, it travels 0.4. 475. It's a uniform electric field. The distance is equal to 0.475 meters. Okay, I want to know its change in kinetic energy in electron volts. All right, we use electron volts when we use these smaller things. And it's, and it's real simple. We're taking one electron the kinetic energy equals that one electron times the voltage. That's an energy because you got a charge times a potential. So this is actually an energy. All right. And if we're just shooting one electron, it becomes easy. The electron volts then become this. You find the voltage, which is equal to E times D. And that's essentially your answer, except that it's the answer is in electron volts. Whereas if you did this, whereas if you did it this way, and I'm this is where I'm going to stop. Um, if you did it this way, if you went, okay, well, the charge of an electron is equal to the, the magnitude of the charge of electrons, equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. I'm going to fire it through this thing of, so the, the uh, kinetic energy in joules, in joules is going to equal uh, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. I love these problems because they're just so straightforward. 2.25 times 10 to the sixth, <laughs> point times 0.475 is equal to 1.602. Second. E to the negative uh, 19 times 2.25 second E to the 6 times 0.475. Okay, now this looks funny. I mean, this is like 1.712 times 10 to the negative 13 joules. All right, um, one electron volt is equal to. Uh, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt. Okay? So, if I want to get a factor that's multiplied by 1, if I want to get a factor that's multiplied, that's, that's um, multiplied by 1, then I'll say, uh, well, I've got that one electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So I need a factor that is equal to, um, so I need a factor that is equal to one. So I take one, and what I'm going to do is then divide both sides by electron volts. I get 1.602 times 10 to the negative, one is equal to 
19 joules per electron volt. So if I divide this answer by 1, by this 1, equals 1.712 times 10 to the negative 13 joules, all right, times 10 to the negative 13 joules, divided by 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt, look what happens. I wind up with electron volts. I'm going to divide that. 1.602 second e to the negative 19. Boom. And look what I wind up with. I wind up with, keep this number in mind, 1.068 times 10 to the 6th electron volts. We'd actually call that probably 1.06 in a, in a physics, in a particle physics lab. Mega electron volts is what is what we just got there. But now look what. But let's go back to the other. Let's go back to just. Let's just take that E field. Let's just take that E field times D. That E field was 2.25 times 10 to the sixth volts per meters, times 0.475 meters. Therefore, those meters cancel. I wind up with volts when I multiply. 2.25 second e to the sixth times 0.475. Look what I get. 1.0687 volts times 10 to the sixth volts. So in other words, the electron volts, because look, electron volts, that means an electron times one volt. So if I take multiply this by one electron, I get the energy the energy in joules was that really small number, but the energy in electron volts is really just the voltage. Don't believe me? Here comes a mic drop. You ready? What? Oh, kill electron volts. Kill electron volts. Ah. To the third. Boom. What was part B? How many kilometers would it have to be accelerated to have the same electric field to increase to 65? Giga electron volts. That's 10 to the 9th. Gigawatts! Gigawatts! Marty! No, sorry. All right, we're done. Out here.